We have seen in our previous videos that we generally use rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system to track the position of an object with time. The position of an object at any instant of time is given by x, y, z coordinates. Here x is displacement on an x-axis, y on y-axis and z on z-axis. In this particular case y is negative. In case when x, y, z does not change with time, that means object is at rest and there is no change in position. Now if we attach an observer with this frame, it becomes an observer's frame. What the observer sees about the object motion depends on the frame of reference to which he is attached. For example, a person is standing on the ground sees a car is moving in positive x direction with a speed of 50 km per hour. While a person traveling in the car himself sees that car is at rest with respect to him. This is because the reference frame attached to him is also traveling with the car velocity and there is no position change with time in that reference frame. But he will see that outside person is moving with 50 km per hour in minus x direction. So what you see or observe depends on from which frame you are observing. Are you observing from the ground or observing from the vehicle moving with constant velocity or observing from an accelerated vehicle. Depending on the motion status of observer, there are two types of reference frames inertial frame which is attached to the ground and non-inertial frame which is attached to the car. So first one is the inertial reference frame. Inertial frame is a frame of reference in which if net force on an object that means sigma f is zero then object does not accelerate means its acceleration is also zero or in other words object is at rest means its velocity is zero or it is moving with a constant velocity means the vector velocity is constant. This is same as a Newton's first law of motion. What is Newton's first law of motion says that a body at rest remains at rest or if in motion remains in motion at constant velocity unless acted on by a net external force. Inertial frame is the frame of reference in which Newton's laws of motion are valid. Or we can say any motion observed through the inertial frame is explainable by Newton's law of motion. The second type of frame is non-inertial frame. Non-inertial frame is a frame of reference which accelerate with respect to the inertial frame. In this frame, Newton's first and second laws are not valid. That means, even if sigma f is a zero, okay, you can see an acceleration in the object. Means acceleration may not be zero. Or in other words, or in other type of case, if there is a net force, if net force is not zero, you can see the object is at rest, which is violate the Newton's motion laws. So then how do we use the non-inertial frames to explain the motion as per Newton's law? To do so we need a pseudo force. This force is also known with name as fictitious force, apparent force, imaginary force or inertial force which makes Newton's law valid or explainable in non-inertial frames as well. So do you mean in case of non-inertial frame, is there always a pseudo force we need to assume? Yes, you understand right. There is always a pseudo force in, in the case of non-inertial frames. To understand the difference between these two frames, let's check out a few cases from our daily life. Case 1. Here 
a circular motion with a rope spring balance in a horizontal plane. A trolley cabin is attached with a rope through a spring balance, moving in a circular path on a horizontal surface. As per observer on the ground or in inertial frame, trolley weight W is balanced by the normal force by the ground and the tension in the rope provides the required centripetal force for this circular motion. Tension in the rope is shown by the spring balance used. So as per observer A, trolley is in circular motion where the weight of the trolley is balanced by the normal force and the centripetal force is given by the tension in the rope. If the reading of the spring balance is 500 Newton, it means the centripetal force is equal to or tension in the rope is equal to 500 Newton. Now for observer A, the trolley is moving in circular path because of this centripetal force which is equal to 500 Newton. Okay, and this is equal to mv square by r. So this explains the situation as per the Newton's second law of motion. Now let's understand the same motion from the perspective of observer B. Observer B is sitting inside the trolley and he is also rotating with the trolley. Means he is under centripetal acceleration or he is in accelerated frame. Accelerated frame is a non-inertial frame. So from his perspective, he will see the trolley is not moving or is at rest. So if trolley is not moving, it means there should be a net force on this trolley should be zero. But he observed the reading on the spring balance which is attached to this trolley and he see the spring shows 500 Newton. It means the trolley having a net force of 500 Newton working toward the center of the circle. So in this case, as per this observer, there should be another force which is balancing this centripetal force to make the trolley at rest. So he assume a pseudo force. In this case, that pseudo force is known as centrifugal force. Okay, now this pseudo force should be equal and in opposite direction to centripetal force. So Fp should be equal to the Fc and it should be in opposite direction. Centripetal force is working towards the center. In that case, the centrifugal force should work in outward direction. So to explain the situation as per Newton's law, observer B has to assume a pseudo force to explain the situation or whatever he sees, validate that as per the Newton's law, he has to assume a pseudo force. In this case, that pseudo force is known as centrifugal force. Now let's consider case two. In this case, there is a ball suspended with a rope spring balance in an accelerated truck. Truck is accelerating in positive x direction with acceleration a. Now there is an observer standing on the ground. Since he is at rest, he is in inertial frame. As per this observer, he will observe that this ball is hanging at an angle theta with vertical. So as per him, the ball has its own weight because of gravity which is working downward direction. And there is a force tension T because of the rope. So there are two forces acting on this ball. And you see this ball is moving with an acceleration A, same as acceleration of the truck. As per him, the tension T, there is two component of tension T, one is in vertical direction, another in horizontal direction. T cos theta, which is a vertical component of tension in the string or row, is balancing the weight of the ball. The another component of tension in the string T sin theta is basically responsible for acceleration of this ball. M is the mass of the ball. So this way the acceleration of this ball is because of the tan sin theta force. This validates the Newton's second law of motion. Now if the same case is being observed by an observer 
who is sitting inside the truck. So here the observer B is himself sitting in the truck. He is accelerated with the truck acceleration A. So he is in non-inertial frame. For this observer, again when he see the ball suspended and at rest, as per him again there is only two forces working weight of the ball and the tension in the string t this angle is theta so here the t cos theta is balanced by the weight of the ball and t sin theta is unbalanced force for this observer since this ball is at rest this should be balanced with some other force now this t sin theta is in this direction Since he is in accelerated reference frame, he has to assume a pseudo force which is opposite to this force and equal in magnitude. This pseudo force is given by the mass of the ball, okay, the m, and the acceleration of this non-inertial frame. Non-inertial frame is accelerated with the same acceleration as the truck. So m into a. The direction of this force, which is a pseudo force Fp, is opposite to the direction of acceleration of non-inertial frame. So here the T sin theta is equal to Ma or Fp, the pseudo force. So this way this ball is at rest from the perspective of observer B from non-inertial frame. By these two cases, we understood that in case of non-inertial frame, we have to consider a pseudo force to explain the motion as per the Newton's laws of motion. And that's all we have for today's session. I hope you would have enjoyed this session. Put your comments and valuable feedback in comment box. If you think you have learned something new today, then please click like button and subscribe us for similar type of knowledgeable videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.